It turns out that radiology is one of those medical fields that has been advancing technically like way beyond many other medical fields. And so it's been a very fruitful field for AI, especially image recognition technology. Because of the success that these methods have had, scholars of machine learning said, hey, guess what? We may not need radiologists in the next five years. If you have something that is faster, better, and cheaper, you wouldn't even think twice about replacing the old technology with the new technology. It just so happens that in this case, the old technology is us. My name is Ramon Alvarado. I'm an assistant professor of philosophy here at the University of Oregon. And I study the implication of computational methods in science and society. I just recently published a paper called What Kind of Trust Does AI Deserve, If Any? And why is the question important? Well, because it turns out that we usually trust things in science and medicine when they're transparent. But these new novel methods are helpful precisely because they are beyond what we can do. And because they can transcend our capabilities, that comes with the question, can we trust something that we don't understand? We tend to think of any computer system that uses mathematical functions as being purely objective and value-free. Now, with data technologies, that's actually definitely not the case, because the way by which we build machine learning and artificial intelligence is trying to choose what kind of data you're going to consider to train your algorithm, what kind of weight you're going to give to that data or that other data is already full of human decision-making. So you might think that, of course, humans are very biased, right? And you might think there are certain contexts in which those biases ought not to take place. One of those places is in court. What if we had a technology that could overcome those biases? Wouldn't you want to use it? Well, it turns out that in the United States, we are already using certain kinds of technology that are supposed to help either mitigate human bias and or help judges make better, faster decisions. Some of these algorithms were investigated by journalists in a very cautious way, and it was found to be biased in the sense that it would give lower uh, risk scores to white people and higher risk scores to minority populations. Now, whether these algorithms were being biased in the way that the journalists say or not is actually highly contentious because the statistical methods are very complex. The problem is not necessarily whether it's biased or not. The problem with these methods is that they're so opaque, meaning not transparent, to the extent that we cannot even know when and or how they're biased. A better way to understand the phenomenon of opacity is to think of a black box. Imagine that you have a rudimentary culture from the ancient times that suddenly stumbles upon a box with buttons. And every time somebody pushes one button, they get a blue color, means that it's gonna rain tomorrow. And every time they press the button and they get a red color, then it won't rain tomorrow. In one sense, they're actually learning something about the world. I wanna predict whether it's gonna rain tomorrow or not, so I press that button to see if it's blue or red. Now, what we're not doing when we're pressing buttons and getting results without knowing what's going on inside of this machine is science. Why? Well, because we're not really understanding how does the machine predict accurately whether it's gonna rain or not. If you care about the way science is practiced and you care about not just knowing that it's gonna rain, but how we can know that it's gonna rain, then you have a problem. So let us go back to the radiologists being replaced by AI. AI is not the only thing you can replace a radiologist with. You might find this surprising, but pigeons are actually amazing at image recognition tasks. Even in medical imaging, like x-rays, they happen to perform amazingly well. Studies have shown that when you aggregate the findings of pigeons, they can actually reach up to 95% accuracy. If your argument is that we ought to replace radiologists with AI because they're faster, better, and cheaper, you must also agree that we should replace radiologists with pigeons because they're more accurate than the humans and the AI. So I would argue that you shouldn't use either the pigeon or the AI. And in order to illustrate that, consider the fruit fly. 
There are instances in which the fruit fly is even more transparent than a pigeon or an AI. Scientists have used fruit flies to detect the presence of cancerous cells in human tissue. How do they do that? Well, they look at their antenna and their antenna react in a specific way through their chemical sensors to the presence of certain other chemicals in the tissue. We understand the chemistry and we understand the mechanisms of the fruit fly's antenna. And therefore, we have scientific transparency and we know exactly how and why the fruit fly's antennas reacted the way it did. Even though we're using a living organism to detect a scientific phenomena, we are working with an open box. The fruit fly is not a black box like the pigeon is or the AI is. So, if you're going to replace humans with something, I would suggest the fruit fly. So AI is not going anywhere, and AI won't be out of radiology anytime soon. But what we can think about is where AI has a role. And it turns out that it has a role helping humans understand things better if we use them in the proper places. Not to diagnose, not to treat, but to help the radiologist in training. I'm not saying that we shouldn't use these technologies. What I am trying to push towards is a better understanding of the limitations of these technologies so that we can use it in a way that also emphasizes what humans and only humans can do.